Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corley from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and welcome to Playload. This is all my video game pickups for the month of, what are we in, March? <laughs> March 2024. And uh, not a crazy month, as you can see, just kind of a humble little gathering of things, most of which came from a convention I was a guest at in uh, Phoenix, Arizona called Game On. Uh, and, but yeah, all the same, we're going to talk about all this cool stuff, some packages, obviously, uh, and a little couple of surprises, some oddities in there for sure. Now, before we do all that, though, if you guys could do me a favor, please like this video, comment down below, and subscribe if you've never done that before, as well as check out all my social media stuff in the description. I've got Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, my Spreadshirt, and Travel Channel. The Spreadshirt actually, I think, are now like linked below so you can like see different shirts and mugs and things if you have any interest in that. Anyway, whatever. If you want to check that out, appreciate it. Now, going on, let's talk some video game pickups. Now, the first thing we got actually had nothing to do with the convention. Um, it was just a game that I'm sure a lot of you guys have played at this point. It's one I've even referenced wanting to get, and I finally went ahead and got it, although I haven't even opened it yet, just haven't had time to. This is Super Mario Brothers wonder. Uh, of course, this was a big release last year for the Nintendo Switch by Nintendo. I've heard nothing but really good things about this game, so I'm very much excited to check it out. Uh, I do love this type of like new Super Mario Brothers U, if you guys remember that one. I thought that was an amazing game. Um, and to have another Mario game like that, of course, is awesome. So very much looking forward to actually sitting down and spending some time with this one. But yeah, got that. That was also, it was because it was March and you know, there's the whole March 10th is Mario Day. So there was like a nice sale on it. So I think I got like 10 bucks off on this. So that was cool, all things considered since, you know, first party Nintendo stuff rarely does that. Uh, but now, moving on, like I said, I went to a convention in Phoenix, Arizona, hosted and actually run by uh, John Lester, aka Gamester81. I'm sure OG YouTubers will know him very well. He's been around the scene for, you know, a hot minute. Uh, and he invited me out there as a guest, so he flew me out, all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, it was cool to, to, I hadn't been to Phoenix in a while, and it was cool to see it again. And of course, the con itself was great. It was my first time ever at that one. And I don't know, man, I might actually go so far as to say that might be like the second or third best retro game convention now. Like Portland Retro Game Expo is kind of the gold standard. And then after that, it's like Midwest, uh, or so, yeah, Midwest Gaming Classic in Milwaukee and Phoenix's Game On. Like those two are kind of neck and neck in my opinion now, which I, to be fair, I had never been to Game On in the past and everybody told me in other years it was in a smaller venue, they had less guests, that kind of thing. So this year was kind of a, Hey, it's, it's like a much bigger experience, and it was my first time being at it, so, you know, maybe that's a little bit of a, uh, a recency bias, perhaps, but regardless, I, I thought it was a good show. So, that said, uh, I did pick up some stuff, not a lot, but a few things. Uh, first thing I got was just kind of a freebie. Um, there's a guy out there, a developer, his name is, we call him Sarumaru, because that's pretty much what he calls himself, and he made a game called uh, FX Unit uh, Yuki, the Henshin Engine. Um, this game, uh, which by his company called Saru Pro. I actually did a video on this years ago for the Sega Dreamcast version. Now he's a, he's big into the like the, as the name implies he's big into the you know the PC FX and you know the super uh, the. Uh, PC Engine, the TurboGrafx-16, etc. Uh, this game was actually made for the ground up basically for the TurboGrafx-16. And this is the Super CD-ROM version. So there's a CD version. I think I think there's a cue card version. I, I would be stunned if there isn't, although I don't have that. But I had the Dreamcast version. So since he was there and he had like a whole uh, table set up, he just gave this to me as a free promo. So thank you very much. He actually gave me, um, for the Dreamcast years ago, and I showed it in the video, uh, when they were making the Dreamcast version, they had to do like basically GDR like replica builds are not on actual GDRs but uh, they only made four of them uh, and one ended up in the Dreamcast junkyard I think they kept one and they sent one to me and the other one was sent to me but lost in the mail somewhere so there's only three of them I've got one so it was very nice of him to do um, but this yeah this is the uh, super uh, CD-ROM version for the PC Engine CD and since the game was really made more for that environment and just kind of ported to the Dreamcast for convenience purposes, I will be curious to actually check out this version. So huge shout out to Sarumaru. Thank you very much. Um, also, I started chipping away again at my original Xbox collection. Uh, if you guys are not familiar, uh, the original Xbox may be the last system I ever try to get a full set for. And when I say full set, I mean a global set. So like every single North American release plus all the regional exclusives. And in the case of the original Xbox, there was 50 Asian releases, and I say Asian specifically, because 48 of them were Japanese, one was South Korean, one came out, came out only in Taiwan. I have all of those, oddly enough. Uh, there was like 80 something, I don't remember the number offhand, in Europe, I got all of those. And, I, and even funnier, there was like four exclusive to Australia, naturally all of them are, you know, 
uh, Australian Football League games, but either way, I've got those. It's the American stuff, ironically, I'm actually missing a bunch from, but I've been chipping away at it more and more and more. Uh, it used to be like <laughs> this comical number, like I still needed 500. I think it's down to like 300 now, because I have been gradually over the past few years kind of just chipping away at it as opposed to what I used to do, which was just go at it with a hammer and just try to get like everything. That said, here's the ones we managed to pick up. Uh, first up, Ty, the Tasmanian Tiger, speaking of Australia. Does anybody remember this franchise? I think they actually just decided to re-release some of these games. I, if I remember correctly, I kind of remember that in one of my these random PR emails I got. Um, this was EA's, like, odd attempt at a mascot for, like, a hot minute. They actually gave him three games, believe it or not. But I do remember there is a trailer for this game where Ty the Tasmanian Tiger was going to be, like, it's... You basically see him in, like, a hospital, and there's all these other mascots in there, like, where they don't completely show them, but it's really obvious that that's Sonic the Hedgehog, or that's, you know, Crash Bandicoot, and he's just going through, like, showing how much better he is. Kind of a cool commercial. But, obviously, he didn't really survive the way that those characters did, but all the same, yeah, I, I think I have some of the sequels, but oddly enough, I don't think I had the first one. Well, I know I didn't have it till now, but, uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, also, Dark Summit which is some sort of snowboarding game. Not really my type of thing, but, like, you know, it's part of the set. This one gets a special shout-out because this only happened because of a member of my Discord. Uh, shout-out to Orky Borky of Canada because he was very insistent that I must own this. And, of course, I would. I just didn't have to, you know, I just hadn't found it yet. But we finally got it. Midway Arcade Treasures 3, which is a collection of a bunch of uh, Midway games. Now, this one's actually kind of interesting because it has stuff that got ended up being re-released in other forms later. Uh, like, there's Dreamcast games on this. Uh, San Francisco Rush 2049, Hydro Thunder, etc. Um, those are actually on this, so they're playable on the original. Xbox, and I think that those are like lesser known ports just because they were just kind of buried inside this collection. All the same, there are three of these, obviously, hence the name, on the original Xbox. This was the one I was missing, so there you go, Orky Borky of Canada. I got it. Uh, now, Whacked. This I don't remember. I think this was just some sort of like 3D platformer. I don't know if I ever actually played it, though. Uh, Microsoft Game Studios. This might be one of the ones that's backwards compatible, actually. But I'm not sure on that, so don't quote me. Uh, and then finally, speaking of like little collections and so on and so forth, we also had Namco Museum 50th Anniversary. This one consists of 50 games, including Pac-Man stuff, uh, a lot of uh, arcade versions of things like Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, Galaxian, Dig Dug. You, you know the kind of the usual uh, repertoire of uh, these games. But all the same, there it is on the original Xbox. So we got five of them off the list. All things considered. That's a win. Uh, now, speaking of Game On Expo, of course, I also had a badge, which was very nice. This is the special guest badge. And I got one other little bonus. Uh, my buddy John Hancock, who I'm sure a lot of you guys know from the Metal Jesus Crew. He's obviously another YouTuber. Uh, when he goes to these shows, he has a table, like, you know, he's selling homebrews and stuff of his content. Same with my buddy John Riggs. They both do that. Uh, in the case of John Hancock, he actually gave me this little USB flash drive that has, like, ROMs of his games. So you can try them on emulators and stuff like that. Throw them on EverDrives, what have you. So just want to give him a shout out there because that was nice of him to do. He didn't have to do that, but he did all the same. So thank you, John. Uh, but yeah, as we got a few packages here uh, that are not related at all to the con. The con was great. Hopefully I can go back again next year. And thank you to everybody who came out to meet me there and stuff. I wasn't expecting that, but it happened. There was a bunch of people who did. So uh, we'll talk packages now. The first one is nothing special. Like, I ordered this myself. I just thought, hey, I'll open it up on camera. Um, I am one of maybe the eight people left in the world that is still subscribed to Gamefly. If anybody remembers Gamefly, I've been apparently a member on there for like 20 years, which is really depressing. Um, Gamefly is kind of an archaic model that really only came around in the towards the end of the blockbuster era but before the streaming era where the idea was with a movie or a game when netflix used to this you would do like mail-in stuff so you would subscribe to the service pick out some stuff and they would just mail you dvds blu-rays video games and you would play it you would rent it and return it i still subscribe to that for gamefly and i would for netflix except they stopped doing it last year uh, I've loved my physical media, what can I tell you? But part of the reason I do that with Gamefly is because when you're a member there, especially when you've been there that long, they give you incredible deals on games uh, used. And there's re their system is really nice because when they get a game, like say they have bought this brand new new stock and they're going to rent it, they simply take the disc out, they, make, they rent this off, and then they just put this to the side. So what I'm saying is, is the case, the manual, the artwork, all that stuff, the inserts, like uh, any sort of DLC codes, are never redeemed. They're just put off to the side and kept in pristine condition. It's just the game itself that they have to you know make sure is up to standards before they sell it to anybody. Uh, and so therefore, I do pick up stuff from them, although I hadn't done it in a while. This is something I decided to go ahead and get because it was a good deal. Let's open it up and see what it is. It is, here it is, 
for the Nintendo Switch, Super Mario RPG, which of course is the remake for the Super Nintendo version. As you can see, they put the cart in upside down, but it is in there. There's no manuals or anything because I believe this game didn't actually come with any. But all the same, yeah, so there you go. Uh, I, I, <clears throat> I won't lie. <clears throat> I'm not a huge fan of RPGs. I've never made that a secret. I've been talking about that for years. But I also know that this game is a solid experience, and it's something I probably should give a bit of a try at, just because I, you know, I I don't know if I ever end up getting the Super Nintendo version. I honestly don't remember anymore. But if I have it, that's great. But all the same, I think it's better to have the uh, newer one anyway. But yeah, uh, it's also first-party Nintendo, Mario, and an RPG, like... I'm not going to say this will ever be worth a bunch of money, but it's certainly not going to go down. Let's put it that way. So I wanted to get it now while I could get it relatively cheap. I think I got it from them. Oh, there's no price on there. I, if I remember correctly, it was only like 20 bucks or something like that. So glad to get it. A uh, couple other packages. This one is going to get its own video, so there's not going to be a whole lot for me to say on it here. Uh, but we'll try to open it up here. Uh, this comes... Oh, okay, that came out faster than I was expecting. Okay, this is a device called the Easy Flash Parallel for the Nintendo DS. Uh, like I said, we'll do a whole video on this at some point. Um, but basically, it's kind of like those R4 Nintendo cards. This is like a newer version that can do a whole bunch of other stuff. It works on a 3DS, although as I understand it, it does not play 3DS games. But again, we'll, we'll tinker with it later. But here it is. Just stay tuned. This will get its own video at some point. So huge shout out to the guys over at Easy Flash Descent. I'll put a link in the description so you can pick this up if you want to. Or just do some more investigation on your own. And last but not least, this is sort of tangentially connected to Game On. Uh, this comes from uh, what we call Saturn Dave, from the Shiro Group. Uh, so the Saturn Shiro Group is kind of like, you know, the super fan base of the Sega Saturn. Uh, like I am kind of associated with Dreamcast, there's, there's a whole other scene of Saturn stuff. And I was hanging out with those guys, Patrick and Dave, uh, at uh, Game On. Uh, in fact, I had decided to like share a table with them, that way they could babysit the, the, the Sega Pluto and all that sort of stuff. It was, it was fun. Um, but I didn't, I had kind of forgotten that Dave is kind of behind a lot of the uh, repros in the scene so like one thing that's pretty significant about the saturn scene is that it's because it was so much more of a challenge for so long there's a lot more people who want to try and you know get past that challenge there's so many japanese games that were great that were never brought out over here so they have a lot more translation efforts so he actually i don't know what his role in this was but i know that the particular game in this box was translated into english uh, and then he went ahead and made like repros of it so people could play it and have this kind of full Saturn experience. And he just decided, he's like, you don't have that? I'm going to send you that. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys uh, right now once I get past bubble wrap, which he did a very good job on. <clears throat> Inside the bubble wrap is, yeah, you got to package it with a, a hard case because it is the Sega Saturn ultimately. And those cases are frigid. Okay, get past that and almost there. Okay, and under that is a layer of plastic, but you get it. This is a full replica of Grandia for the Sega Saturn uh, with English translation. So Grandia is an official release. It did come out in Japan, but it never came out in North America for the Sega Saturn. I know it came out on the PS1 and all that, and it's probably the definitive edition of the game because the game was actually built for the Saturn straight up. It was just kind of converted over to the PS1 with certain sacrifices made. But uh, yeah, Dave went ahead and made this like really nice repro that has uh, discs, obviously. Now the discs, despite they have very nice artwork on them, they are ultimately CDRs because there's no way as of now to replicate an official press disc because it would require a, a specific defect in them to create a wobble so that it would be self-booting. It's a whole different discussion. But he did this really nice artwork. Like you would look at that and you'd be like, oh, that's completely legitimate. Um, it actually looks like one of those working designs discs. Uh, it also, of course, includes the second disc in uh, one of these like Saturn type of packaged label. I don't know where, Dave, I don't know where you got these like reproduced cardboard like cutouts that fit into that type of case. I don't know how you got those in bulk, but good on you. Uh, he also created a poster. I remember him mentioning this because everybody thought this was just kind of above and beyond that he would actually do this. But it's a poster and a map that goes inside the game, which is cool. Uh, and then of course he also made a manual, which is a full color thick manual i have no idea how many copies of this dave actually did but yeah this is like this is insane <laughs> this is a, a lot of work like if, if it honestly if it weren't for the fact that the discs are cdrs there's no way there's no way you would know that this wasn't an official release 
Um, yeah, and the, the obviously he's got the full style like long box cases here. I don't, I know these are I, I believe these are repro cases that have been in production for the last couple of years, and he obviously bought a surplus of them or something. Um, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, the only evidence that it's not like official is when it says things like Saturn Shiro and stuff like that, and yeah. But either way, thank you, Dave. That'll look amazing there um, to, to have. I, I The thing with Dave, though, is I don't think he's actually producing these anymore. But if you're interested in checking it out or possibly hitting him up about one, I'm not going to... I'm just going to say check out the Saturn Shiro Discord. Uh, that's where all those guys hang out. The Saturn community is very cool, just like the Dreamcast community. And uh, obviously, because they make stuff like this. I wish the Dreamcast community did stuff like this. This is this is baller. Um, we, the Dreamcast community does, but not like to this level of effort. But anyway... Um, so yeah, huge shout out to Dave. Thank you very much for that. Uh, thank you to the guys who sent me the Easy Flash again. This will get its own video coming soon. Uh, obviously, thanks to John Lester uh, for hooking me up and bringing me out to GameCon. J thanks to John Hancock for hooking me up with this. And Sarumaro, of course, for uh, uh, FX, Yuki, uh, FX Unit Yuki, the Henshin Engine. Henshin means to transform, incidentally. Um, and thank you guys, as always, for watching. I appreciate it. If you guys could, again, please like the video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done that before, as well as check out all the social media stuff in the description. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, Spreadshirt, Travel Channel. I appreciate the support on all those platforms. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all later.